Hey, Caliburn owners. I think it's time we had a talk. The coils of a K-14 are 0.105 inches thick. That's pretty crazy. To give you an idea of how big a K-14 is, here's a K-26 fitting inside of a K-14. These springs are crazy strong. Good luck bending one in your hands. You've got no hope whatsoever. So the spring is huge, we knew that. Why they need to replace parts? Here are all the replacement parts and stock parts in frame. There's only three printed pieces for each. Relatively simple. Let's compare the stock parts to the modified parts. Here are the rear butt pieces. On the surface, you know, why would you need to replace this piece? The K14 seems to fit over it just fine. Well, the issue is the K14 fits over it with too much clearance. You see that? It can move around. And what that allows the spring to do is it allows the spring to bend on this piece and that makes it much harder to prime because the coils can hit the top of the piece and they can also bend while they're on the piece and that makes the prime significantly harder. With the modified piece, the K14 has nowhere to go other than down and this makes the prime much easier. When I replaced this piece, seriously, the prime felt 50% lighter. These are the two rear butt pieces. The modification here is pretty obvious. A K14 simply doesn't fit inside of a stock rear butt piece. So you make the hole a little larger and it fits just fine. The plunger is where a lot of innovative changes were made. Now you see, this one's solid walled, this one's not. The stock one has thick walls because why not? There's plenty of space for the spring so it's not an issue. To fit the K14, the walls need to be very thin. And what this does is it means that we have significant structural problems, especially if we leave the holes in. My stock original ones with the holes in broke here often, just at those links they would break. On top of that, you'll obviously need a spring. I also sell them on my Etsy store. I'm Remzak on Etsy. On the RAM piece, I actually use an X-Profile O-ring. What this does is it frees up another O-ring for the plunger and it improves the seal on the RAM. I'd place two O-rings on that plunger. I'd recommend you place two of the stock O-rings on your RAM piece to improve the seal. Multiple users have demonstrated that this increases the velocity. If you're truly trying to eke out every single little bit of velocity, you should also replace your RAM with the aluminum RAM, which I suspect leaks less than the stock PLA part, because I suspect that most of my leakage occurs around the PLA part and then around the O-rings. Now, what's it like to prime a K14 caliber? Well, honestly, it's not that bad. Just brace the stock against your shoulder, grab the pump handle, brace your fingers around the pump handle in a way that's comfortable to you, and then pull straight backwards. Then, seat it forward like you always would, and you're good to go. Now, just to prove that the kit is solid, every shot I do will actually be a dry fire as a stress test for the kit. So, that's a drive by. You could probably tell. Now, can you prime it without bracing the shoulder? Yeah, you can. Just make sure that you don't snap your handle off. So brace here, brace here, pull, and you can do it without bracing there. Other than that, it's really not that bad. It's a pretty easy kit to install. It's pretty cheap off my Etsy store, and it's easy to print as well. None of the printed parts should require any support whatsoever. If your printer is okay at bridging, you can print the plunger piece fine, and there are no overhangs whatsoever on either of these parts, so it should be pretty easy. So, common questions. Is it reliable? Well, I haven't broken it yet. I've probably put a thousand shots through it. Can you dry fire it? Will it break? Um, no, I mean, we've been doing that the whole time. There's another. It seems fine to me. I really wouldn't worry about it. The kit's been very stable for me. So, how hard is it to swap back to a stock spring? Well, the only parts that you really need to replace is the rear butt piece, but you should replace all the rest. It's not that bad. Honestly, you could keep the plunger as well if you wanted to. Um, that's not a big deal. So it's really only six bolts that you have to undo to swap out your spring and swap out your parts. 
these parts that you have to remove, you have to remove them anyways to replace your spring. So what's the big deal? Can I still run it with a stock barrel? Well, of course. I mean, you've seen me dry fire it. You should probably be fine with the stock barrel. I would say, however, you are not going to get anywhere near the velocity potential if you're running the stock barrel. You should have a barrel that's at least 16 inches on this. The PETG barrel that I sell is only that length a for shipping and B so that people can attach scar barrels to it with the stock caliber and scar barrel, which limits barrel length to 14 inches. On the topic of barrels, the stock caliber and barrel probably isn't going to cut it for this much power. I'd recommend you replace it. So currently I have a 24 inch length of stock caliber and barrel material on this, which is great for all around. You know, I can shoot any type of dart out of this, but I would also recommend getting a tighter barrel, such as a PETG or a tighter aluminum barrel. I even have a railgasm adapter that allows you to fit a coupler inside of the first link of your railgasm kit, allowing you to use alternate barrels with the railgasm kit. It's pretty cool, you should check it out. Good luck guys, I hope you find great success with this kit. I hope it carries you through many battles. Nerf on, Remzak, see you guys.